and welcome to the select board meeting for April 25th, 2023. The board is present minus Mark. We have the town manager, the town clerk, members of, uh, of uh, Main Water. Um, can we please stand for the uh, pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from April 11th, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with one amendment. Sorry, Patty, I didn't catch it sooner. No, that's good. And Article 9, uh, we just have the motion carried. It should be 4-0. Oh, what was that? Linda was there. 5-0. That's what's oh, right. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll second the motion. Uh, motion seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? One abstain. And that is all set. Uh, next, we have our first public comment. Do we have a member of the public who wishes to make comment? All right. I will close the first public comment. We have no public hearing. We have no reports of committees. We have. You can Dennis Briggs here for a committee yeah. report. Oh, please. <coughs> I am uh, Dennis Dupree representing the uh, Friends of the Berwick Riverfront. Uh, I just want to give the final report from my end. I've been volunteering with the Riverfront since 2015 when we originally put it in. Um, I met with Shannon to update her on what was left in the finances. Um, pretty much it's been kind of running its, itself for the last four or five years. You know, the, the town gets together with myself and we put the dock in. 45 minutes and then we take it out in the fall um, so it's kind of like just running so I think it's time to just move on to something else and you know Shannon and the rec department are going to take it over there was a little bit of financing left um, so there's about fifty five hundred and thirty nine dollars there's a balance in there and I mentioned to Shannon they should just keep it in a separate account and if they need to buy anything to fix anything as it goes along um, we've had I don't think we spent the hundred dollars in the last nine years just getting a few pots here and there. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we had a, an enormous amount of people and businesses that that got involved with this thing. And if you actually want to see some of the people, you can actually see them. You know, go on to the Facebook and the Riverfront, and you can see all the people that what it took to have all these people to get together and work with Steve Brown and take the building down and get it surveyed and. <clears throat> making sure where the town, you know, where the piece of land was and raising about $25,000 to get the launch in and get it done uh, with all mm. these volunteers. So some of them have just uh, passed away, passed on, retired, and moved on to different things. So that's just about <clears throat> what I have for a report, and I want to wish everybody the best of luck and the rec department. And uh, we get about 450 people. It's 26 weeks, roughly. So we get about 450 people a year that actually use it, and it really kind of works well with the summer's worth launch because you can either put in here and go up or come down from their launch. And, I mean, it's just very, very busy in the summertime. And I've had a lot of people over the years tell me that uh, they've never been in a kayak or, or a canoe or anything like that, and now they've actually gone out and purchased them. So um, we've had people that have come from different towns and come visit people in the in the community and they come up here and some of them, a lot of them that I know have actually made it a commitment to come up and go kayaking with their families and having something to do here. So it's it's one of those things like, again, like across the street with the edge, you put in a place that you want to bring people to so it's become a destination. And for years, for something like that, we've always had to travel to some other town to do. So it's been a really good positive thing. So I basically wanted to say kind of thank you and... Um, Pass the reins on to Shannon and uh, the rec department. Yes, thank you. We, uh, we appreciate all the work that you've done. Yeah. Um, so much so. <laughs> hey. Well, it's it's just, it's not yeah, me. It's. Oh, thank you. <laughs> can we get a picture? Oh, hey, can you get in this? We can get a picture. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> Thank Come you. out from behind the from pole. From behind the pole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's who it is. Thank you. But, um, Got it. Yeah, again, it's, it's, this was not just, this was hundreds of people. No, and, absolutely. And, and you go back and you look at this thing and 
from people volunteering, materials, uh, all all of it coming together for a good cause. Uh, and, it, and it was a lot of people, and I could, I've got a list of about 100, and I could start naming them, but <laughs> if you just go through on Facebook, you see a lot of people. And, uh, and we certainly hope that that, yeah. you know, that community element continues as we yeah. move forward with it. it yeah, I, I hope it does, um, you know, because we, we did get a lot of things done, and there's still a lot of things to do, and I can remember in... 1998, Eleanor Murphy walking into Deb and Dukes and saying, you, you're on the Envision Committee. And I'm going, what? So, okay, Eleanor, you didn't argue with her, but you just yeah, did don't it. Don't argue with Eleanor. And, and it was nice because over the years, I've had people like, you know, when we had the old Envision, just getting together as volunteers and finding out different ways on how to bring businesses and different activities to the town, um, you know, years ago with, with Frank Underwood and, and Dana and Vicky and Oscar and, I mean, Frank and Bowles and all those, uh, all, I'm talking 98 mm -hmm. to 2004. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would have thought that Jet Knox, the CEO of the hospital, would come into Devin Dukes and say, what's going on over here? Why do you want us to come here? But with us putting out postcards and the Frisbee and Dover and York, and here they are. So that's how we did it, and I see that this group can envision, and now you've got a big player in town, uh, there's going to be a lot of great things. And I think that, that, if, that if, if you work on just keeping that volunteerism going, because you have so much talent, and years ago we didn't have an economic development office, we had volunteers. And I go back to what Tom and Mark remembers, you gave somebody $24,999.99, and they got you back $2 million. And they were volunteers that did it. So that's been a good thing. Your volunteers are good, and I'm hoping that the younger people in the community step up and just do and get involved with what they like to see and uh, keep it going. Yeah, I, I just want to thank you. you know, as, as you, you talk about the history and everything, is um, you have been one of the drivers behind all of this. Is, you know, back when I was my first term in the legislature in the mid '90s is when we first started talking about this, and yeah. and you were one person who's never let go of it. So, is uh, you no, know, I know everybody in the town owes you a deep debt for everything you've done. And, and yeah, I I, you know, I I take what you said with you no, know, a lot of other people have been yeah. involved, but you have been yeah. one of the constants there all the time. Well, it's it's. It's it's been fun, and sometimes people just think I'm a tick on the dog's butt. But you got to just be persistent. But it all it'll all work out in the end. So thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Take care. Yes. All right. We have a special presentation by Maine Water Company as an update for where we are with the. Uh, the new, ring, uh, the new system that we have in place here. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Um, and a reminder <clears throat> with our with our agreement with the town of Berwick, we we had agreed to to meeting a, a twice a year uh, with the select board. Uh, just a reminder: we can always meet more. We can always meet less. And and we also don't need to wait for a select board meeting to share information. So, James, I've appreciated the the uh, the communication from you and. Um, I will start out with, if you go to the back of this operations report, you'll notice there it says customer service and billing update with no text. <laughs> so that means that I didn't print off the right copies. So I, I, I added that in today. Um, I have that right here, so I'll be able to provide the update, and then I'll send the most recent copy um, to all of you. So starting is, uh, is just a general staffing. Um, Mickey Hall is here today. He is our superintendent of for Biddeford Saco and, and the town of Berwick. Um, also uh, falls under his leadership. So uh, Mickey's been very involved in the Berwick uh, system uh, since we have be began to run it. Um, so th thanks, Mickey, for being here. Uh, Joe Dignam, uh, who you know is the operator who came to us from York Water District um, and also, while well, working for York, uh, helped uh, the gap b between your Class 4 operator and us. Uh, he made the move to Maine Water. We're really, really excited to have him on board. He's a He's a true professional. He's a class four operator. He knows water quality. <clears throat> On top of that, he's a he's a great person to work with. So, um, and, and and also we've continued to to have Mike Brown support us working through a staffing agency. He's brought a lot of coverage to us, so we we certainly appreciate that. 
And also tonight we have Dan Flagg um, from Wright Pierce, uh, your consulting engineer for the, for the project. We know Dan very well. We've worked with him for several years. Um, so we will we'll jump into the, the distribution system maintenance, which is essentially the pipes in the street, the valves, the hydrants. Uh, Mickey's team, uh, day one, day two, started going out into the system and doing hydrant winterization, essentially making sure the hydrants are pumped out and they're not frozen. We did identify quite a bit that were frozen, so we, we thawed them out. Uh, we did some standard maintenance to that, and we also put uh, six out of service. So four that we're waiting on hydrant parts for to put back together before they can be operable again, and two that need to be replaced, uh, waiting for the pavement plants to open up and to, to get the hydrants in, in place. Um, but that's, that's part of the standard agreement. That's what we do is make sure that the, that the hydrants work. Um, our engineering team has been on site and supporting the town of Burwick's water system um, and representing the town for the new development downtown, just, just confirming that things are going into spec um, and, and making sure that, that what goes in is, is done correctly. And then all of the compliance, um, water quality sampling, reporting, we, we did finish the consumer confidence report, which is the annual required water quality report. It's on the Maine Water website under our, our water quality tab. Um, we recently uh, conducted a required sanitary survey with the Maine Drinking Water Program, which is a routine inspection that happens every two years or so. Um, we got very good feedback from the Drinking Water Program. They're, they're very comfortable with how we're running things. They did note some minor deficiencies, which is, in those reports, it's different than a major deficiency. It's not a violation, just some things to clean up. Um, so there, that went well. Um, now we'll go to our, our water treatment facility. As you know, in, in, in uh, late February, early March, we, we experienced some, 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 some challenges there, uh, specifically with the filters. So we experienced some um, reduced flow, um, very reduced flow through filters one and two, and that really affected our ability to, to fill the one distribution tank in the, in the system. And the, the, the customers who experience the low pressure are the ones who are closest to the tank. Um, and, and while most of the town doesn't feel the full impact. Uh, so once we recognized that there was an issue, we pulled our team together, operations, water quality, engineering, our communications teams, and also engaged uh, Dan Flagg at Wright Pierce to, to carve out a quick path forward. Uh, we, did in a, we sent the, a, a, a blower out uh, um, for an emergency repair. Uh, we also issued immediately a conserve water advisory um, that I'm sure that you're aware of. And that's, we would do that in any system. It, it, it buys us time. Um, and it's, at the end of the day, it's a community's water system. So if there's an issue and, and there's a water quantity issue, we want to communicate that. Uh, and we continue to communicate updates throughout the process. We did find that a lot of the contact info that we had, it wasn't correct, so that, that gave us the opportunity when a customer called us to say, hey, I didn't get a call, then we got their right contact info, and then they're on our next, our next message. Um, we, we talked to a lot of customers directly over the phone through customer service and, and Mickey Hall as well, uh, and we identified that there were uh, clogging of filter drains and the clarifiers within the package unit due to the high levels of manganese over time. So uh, essentially they hadn't been maintained, they hadn't been cleaned, and it, 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 caught, up, it caught up to the filters. Um, so what ultimately it, it led to was uh, Dan Flagg helped us a lot, connected with Bath Water District, who was a client of Wright Pierce's. They have, uh, they have essentially identical, um, an identical uh, setup, and they do a routine cleanings. So we walked through that procedure with them. But in the meantime, um, Mickey and Joe and Mike and brought in a local contractor to do some shoveling overnight, shoveled out media, um, took apart the under drains, uh, w washed them out the best that we could and put filter two back together by the morning. And we had significant increase in flow. And a, a couple days later, that's when we were able to lift the advisory. Um, and then... Later down the road, a few weeks later, we were able to do the same for filter one. For filter one and for filter two, we've also done the cleanings um, that we learned about from Bath Water District, and, and we're going to continue to do, to do those uh, uh, periodically as a, as a routine maintenance. 
um, which we've learned as we've learned this system is really a good idea when you have that level of manganese hitting the filters. Um, and what the board should be aware of is that there is a need uh, for a filter media replacement and an under drain replacement as well as some uh, air scour motor replacements and so we're working with Dan to figure out how we can pull that into the SRF project. Um, I do want to let let the board know that you know not doing that is it would be a would be a poor decision. It's really it's really in the best interest of the water system to to make sure that, that we make those investments. Uh, and and on the operation side, a, a really a big big thanks to Joe and Mickey and Mike who you know it was a twenty four seven operation for two weeks. Um, so not a lot of sleep, a lot of dedication. So I I uh, I certainly can't stand up here and take that credit. That's the operations guys that, that made that happen. And then on the, uh, the customer service and billing update, the, the, the conversion of customer data to our systems, that, that was completed on time. Um, Lisa was great to work with, with the town of Berwick, a great communication. Um, and so a, 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 a billing update, the, we read the meters and the first bills were, were issued for all metered accounts on the 14th of April. For the first quarter billings, there were 992 bills uh, sent out, and it totaled about a, a 107,000 in revenue. Um, fire protection bills were issued on 4, 4 uh, 22 for a total of about 60 grand. We, um, in, in our billing software, we separate the fire protection bills and the residential bills, which is different than the Berwick customers are used to, but we'll do that going forward. They'll get a fire protection bill for those who have a, who have a sprinkler and then a normal residential. Um, all customers now have the ability to access their accounts electronically through the Mainwater website um, and can set up e-billing and pay electronically if they do prefer to do so. Um, the board should be aware that we did get a handful of calls around it seemed to be unusual water usage to what they were used to on their bill. Um, we, we did go out and, and check for leaks in homes and, and talk to customers. Uh, also, though, we, we did find that, that, that there were some issues with the reads that happened back in January. Um, so we're, we're working with customers to clean some of that up. And, and then our hope is that we wouldn't re repeat that same challenge w once we have our read um, for, in April and then our next reads for the next quarter, if, if that makes sense to the board. What do you think caused the irregularity? Was, were the meters just not read properly? Or? Uh, you know what? I, I honestly, it, it could very well be so. But I... I don't know that, but the, 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 some of the readings didn't make sense. So, What percentage of customers are having this issue? Um, in, in talking to Pam Blackman, just a handful. It's not, it's not, yeah. not many. Limited. Not many. Limited. But um, ju just a reminder, if, if you hear of anyone who has concerns or for anyone who is listening in, the best thing to do is to call our 1-800 number, um, and, and we'll work with you to, to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, and make it right. And I, the, la the, last, the last part of the update is that we did, we did do all the proper n notifications then for shutoffs. Mm -hmm. For those who don't pay their bill, there's a Telefox call that goes out, there's a letter that goes out, and then there's another t automatic Telefox call that goes out that says, you know, if you don't pay your bill, the water will be shut off. So we did go out and do a handful of shutoffs, but we, we've collected that revenue and turned the water back on. So um, I think for a, for a customer service, revenue service uh, conversion, it, it, it really went rather well. There's going to be some small hiccups in, in, in data that we take in and old reads that we take in, but we'll keep working on those. And that, that concludes the operations report. So I'll, I'll see if the, the board has any questions, and then I'll turn it over to... Dan Flagg to walk through an update on the SRF project for the treatment facility. Sounds pretty good. Okay. No questions on operation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, nice presentation, Mike. <laughs> um, so I spoke to you. I'm Dan Flagg from Wright Pierce. I'm the consultant on the project. I've been working uh, with the town for, for several months as we've been uh, migrating towards, uh, building towards these upgrades and, and improving on water quality for the town of Berwick. Um, so I wanted to update folks. I, I spoke to you uh, probably back in December, 
um, when we were wrapping up the piloting that we were doing last fall with uh, Veolia. So we got their pilot report uh, um, about six weeks ago. We've been going through and we were pretty much finished up our draft report, so I wanted to, to kind of produce an update on that today. Um, our draft report, um, we're going to be sharing that with Maine Water over the next couple of weeks. Um, it is important that where Maine Water is the operator, they have technical expertise in operations. We want to make sure that they have an opportunity to review our work, make comments, and be part of the process that we build towards as part of a capital improvement plan. As far as the pilot results, and just to take a step back, what we were looking at with the pilot test is selecting a technology to improve the water quality prior to the filter process. We heard tonight that the filters got plugged up because of long-term impact of manganese and other water quality related issues. The existing clarification process is not resilient enough to provide adequate treatment ahead of those filters. So the process we, we tested, um, it basically was all positive. Um, it basically hit all the benchmarks we were looking for in terms of improving um, organic removal, iron removal, and manganese removal. So we're very positive about it. And across the board, all the different chemistries we tested with this process outperformed the existing um, treatment clarifier. So just as a comparison, uh, on the best pilot trial that we piloted, uh, we got 70% removal of the organic carbon, which is the color you see in the, in the water, um, the brown color. In comparison to the existing treatment clarifier, that produces about 32% removal. So we more than doubled the performance there. As far as the iron removal, um, with the pretreatment process that we piloted, we're up around 80% uh, compared to about 62% for the existing treatment process. And for the manganese, which is the big one here, um, we got 43% 40, removal of the manganese with a pilot test compared to about 11% for the existing treatment process. Now, the one thing with the manganese, we can do much better with the removal at a full-scale design because with the manganese, you have to, you have to you got to add some chemistry to oxidize it to be able to take it out with the process. We weren't able to do that with a pilot test because it's, it's hard to do on a small scale. But the science about manganese uh, pre-oxidation as part of this process um, is well established and Summersworth is using it, so we, we intend to uh, at a full-scale design and part of our preliminary design show that uh, the manganese removal can be enhanced uh, with this process with chemistry. So that's uh, all positive with the pilot results. So now we're building upon the, with the preliminary design of a large capital project with implementation of this upgrade might look like. So that's in progress. Now that Maine Water's at the table as the operator, again, it's an opportunity for for Wright Pierce and the town to work collaboratively with Maine Water so they can help us vet the, the treatment process from an operations standpoint. Some of the questions that we need to answer as a group, uh, basic site layout and conceptual integration of the existing plant. Our goal is to retain the existing filters and the basic infrastructure of the plant, but upgrade the pretreatment process and some of the other uh, deficiencies that have been identified um, as we've learned more about the facility. Operational cost. We're going to improve treatment, but there's a cost to improve treatment in terms of more chemistry and those sorts of things, electrical costs. So we're going to be quantifying that as part of our analysis. And then we're going to be updating the, um, the capital cost to do a, a large pretreatment upgrade and compare that to the available funding as part of our process. And the other big issue with the existing plant, obviously, is the waste handling operation with those bags that are out there, the filter bags. Uh, part of this process, you know, to treat the water, we're going to be generating more sludge that we have to manage on site. We're going to come up with a different strategy to do that, which we hope will be um, more sanitary and operational friendly for both Maine Water and the town and cost. With the pretreatment process, we will see longer filter run times because we're going to be taking, taking out those impurities in the water that are plugging up the filters prematurely. So. As part of our operational analysis, we're going to be looking at, you know, you know, if we save filter backwash water, that's going to have less wastewater in the system. We're going to generate more sludge. So we're going to be going through the operations. You know, are we, we're adding chemistry over here and adding some costs over here, but we're saving costs on the wastewater side of things. So part of our analysis is to kind of do a cost-benefit analysis 
so we understand exactly you know what the outcome of the upgrade is going to be long term from an operation standpoint. So with a, with a with the recent hurdles <laughs> that you all heard about with the filters and main water uh, being able to stabilize things at the plant, we discovered that. Mike alluded to that the manganese over time is is really compromised the existing plant, um, which is revealed in the last couple months. So we know that we want to preserve the existing filters in the existing under drain system with the pretreatment upgrade, but we feel like it would be a benefit to do a smaller capital project now to address some of the low hanging fruit deficiencies that were revealed with the filters in a blower that failed. And, um, and get that bid package um, approved by the drinking water program. It would be covered by the bond and get that out to bid here. I'm, I'm shooting for towards the end of June so we can get a contractor on board and get materials ordered so hopefully we can get the under drains upgraded, new filter media, new blowers, um, the core pieces of equipment that basically failed the last couple months that main water had to shore up. So that's kind of our plan moving forward. Um, that's going to allow us to to basically start the upgrade process this year um, with the, with the filters, while we continue to work with Maine Water and the town to develop the bigger pretreatment project, um, which would be the part of the bigger upgrade. But as a starting point, we want to try to you know stabilize the plant. Um, get good operations here in the interim until we have time to, to get the pretreatment process online. So much more to come on that, but I think um, to this point everything's positive in terms of coming up with a technical solution here to address the, the water quality issue. And I think we got we got a path forward and I think we're going in the right direction. So with that, I'll pause and take any questions. <coughs> What is the uh, cost of this uh, new capital project? Uh, the filter project? Yeah. Um, all, of, all I have right now is a quote for the equipment for the filter under drains and the media um, and the blowers. It's about 180000 for the materials. Um, we still have to put uh, bid documents together for a contractor to actually do the installation of the equipment. The other part of the scope is that um, the the raw water pumps and the finished water pumps are, are the original equipment from 1998. There was one new, new, new raw water pump purchase um, and a new finished water pump purchase. Uh, they're sitting on the floor. They haven't been installed yet. So what we'd like to do is this bid package to include installing those pumps that were previously purchased, but also replace the, the other two pumps that haven't been uh, re replaced or rehabbed. So the pumps would be the other major list, and that would allow have new pumps, raw water, finished water pumps. The backwash pumps were replaced a couple of years ago, so those are new. In the blowers, um, we found that there's only two blowers, and actually there's no redundancy because you need two blowers to do a filter uh, backwash properly according to the design operations. When the one blower went down, when this process started um, with the clogged filters, it just exacerbated the compromising of the facility. So our strategy is to replace the two blowers in kind, but also add a third blower uh, to the design. And with this initial contract, we may just include the third blower as a purchase, have it set, setting there and as part of the bigger project, um, because we need to create some space down in, the, in that pipe gallery um, to accommodate the third blower piped into the piping system. So we're still working through those details, and I'll be communicating with uh, with Maine Water, and they'll be reviewing our plans and specs, um, as well as the drinking water program. There's enough money in the bond to to cover all that and the the rest of the upgrade. We don't know yet as far as the rest of the upgrade. Um, as you know, the last two or three years since that um, that funding was estimated, there's been a lot of cost of cost inflation with materials and labor and that so forth. So. That's part of the reason why I want to, you know, go through the preliminary design process, update the cost estimates, make sure we get alignment from main water, um, as you know, we want to make sure we have general alignment that we're, you know, we're we're addressing the issue from an economic standpoint that we're not doing anything extra that we don't need to do, but long-term operations is the key. 
So my goal is to kind of quantify that for you and have a separate presentation where we can present that to you and then understand, okay, do we have a gap? If we have a gap, what is the gap? Um, and what are the implications of that? Any other questions? No, I think Dan answered. You had what I had, so. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just say, if any of you folks ever want to walk through that place and physically look at each of the things you're talking about, I can do that with you anytime you want. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, I you guys. And, I, and I think there's going to be some prior, prioritization as we move forward, and I've spoken to James about this. Obviously, the pre-treatment um, is, is the high priority. Um, and now that we know that the, the filters are compromised and the end drains, obviously that's a high priority as well. There's other things that we that really need to be updated in the plant, you know, things that we've identified like the chemical feed systems, the ventilation system in the plant. But those are things that we can kind of kind of parse out um, if it becomes a budget issue, we can prioritize things. So my goal is to kind of, you know, make a list, you know, here are the priority things, here's the cost. Here's our available funding. What is the gap? And then have a communication with you folks. Okay, you know these are things that we may be able to, you know, defer for a while, um, and this is the reason why. Um, so that's kind of my approach: is to try to provide guidance and information and prioritize, um, and also factor in the the budget limitations, the capital costs to the to the customers, but also thinking about the long-term operational cost uh, for the town in in Maine Water. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Just want to say thank you for Maine Water for all everything you've done. You guys have really done a lot for us. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, we're and and the the board and the town and and, and honestly the the customers as well have been great to work with. So appreciate it. And it's great to see the the trucks out there all the time doing the doing what they're supposed to do. You know, it's it's all very helpful. You know. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty happy so far. Thank you for having us. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We'll see you in about six months. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. We have no unfinished business. Uh, town manager report. So I thank Maine Water for being here. It's from the very beginning of meeting Maine Water all through, through today. It's been a, a very similar presence and just uh, receptive and optimistic and forward thinking so it's uh, been a pleasure working with Maine Water and, and Bright Pierce for that matter as well. Thanks Dan. Likewise. Thank Take you. care guys. Yeah. Thanks guys. You too. The Route 4 safety study has some preliminary concepts. Um, we should have a draft in the next few weeks and I'll share with the board. The improvements include turning lanes, entrance improvements on and off the uh, Route 4 and raised center meeting islands. So one of the issues, uh, a lot of side swipes, rear ends, people are trying, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's just terrifying to be stopped at the middle of Route 4 and you got cars going 50 miles an hour by you. So they're going that slow by you? <laughs> <laughs> 55, 50 at best. Um, so looking at, um, like Blackberry Hill Road has a warrant for a right-hand turn lane and a left-hand turn lane. Um, in the center median islands, one of the issues we've seen is just people losing their minds and passing recklessly. So a combination of, of these and other improvements. Um, so that's that's the, the progress to date. And again, there'll be some concepts in the next few weeks ready to go. And these will be things that the town pays for, not the state? The town will probably end up paying anywhere from 10 to 20 percent probably would be the town cost. Okay. There's a lot of uh, federal infrastructure funding out there, and there's a new uh, initiative for safe streets. So this would certainly qualify for that. Uh, just, yeah, there are probably you know several million dollars of improvements, and um, that depending on the funding source, anywhere from ten to twenty percent. Yeah, just want to send a. Major congrats, congratulations to Sharon Kelly and Burrock for a lifetime. They're a recipient of a major SMAA grant. And these funds will go towards lunch and learns, gentle yoga, snacks for social seniors, and equipment for outdoor activities. There are six senior program and activities scheduled for over the next several weeks. 
So they're really hitting their stride with Burke for a Lifetime. More information on those events can be found on the Burke for Lifetime page at burkemain.org and at the library page. And just a note to save the date for a few summer events, the 10th annual Burra Car Show will be held June 4th from 8 to 2 in the For Fox Sake 5K in the Lawn Chairs and Sullivan Square Concerts is August 19th. The 5K is at 8.30 and the Lawn Chairs event is from 4 to 8 p.m. The Burwick Trash Bash slash Earth Day cleanup is underway. Uh, we had a kickoff this weekend at Corner Point. Trash grabbers, bags, and we're ordering some um, vests uh, will be available at the Town Hall. The bags and grabbers are available at the Town Hall now. There'll be prizes for several categories, and I just invite you to check out the event page. Major thanks to Nicole and Hike It Baby, Burke Rec Department, and Division Brewer Rec, and everyone out and about helping to keep Burke beautiful. And last and certainly not least, the auditorium lift is in final stages of production. And I got word today that it should be four weeks until it is shipped. Nice. So I'm not sure. Between delivery and installation, we're <laughs> hoping for <laughs> by the vote. So that completes my report for this evening. Are there any questions for the town manager? All right, moving along. Uh, site board communications. I've got a couple notices here. Um, we have a notice from uh, Xfinity Comcast terminating channel agreements in May. I don't know if you are a big fan of 1098 and 1094, but they're apparently going away. Um, and we received two notices about, uh, we received a notice about the solar array development and the Blackmore Road development. Both of those are in progress, planning board and stuff. So just notifications that they're happening. Uh, yeah. Uh, approval of the accounts payable. All right, we have three. We have a payroll warrant number 71 from April 20th, 2023, in the amount of $105,133.53. We have a payroll warrant number 72 from April 27th, 2023, in the amount of $79,030.88 in eight cents. We have an accounts payable warrant number 73 from April 25th, 2023 in the amount of $167,442 and 46 cents. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Second. All those in favor? Bills paid. New business. A request for an extension of license on premise for Corner Point Brewing. I can cover this one. Uh, this is the same license that was requested for last year. This is um, to be able to provide beer during the lawn chairs event in front of their building. So that's what the extension is, is to come up a little bit on just before the sidewalk area in front of Corner Point. This is the same area that it was last year? Yep. Were there any issues with serving beer last year, police or rowdy patrons or anything like that? Nothing like that, no. Just, I mean, just the concerns on crossing Rochester Street, but um, we knocked it down to like one lane, had it roped off, so we didn't really have any, I don't I mean, we didn't have any close calls or anything like that, but it's just going to be uh, just something that will be a main priority to make sure that it stays safe. But there's no... No issues with anyone that were drunk or belligerent or anything like that. Any All good other? vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I'll hear a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the request for the extension of the license at Corner Point Burn. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. Next, we have to set the public hearing date for June 13th, 2023, town meeting election, and TC recommends May 23rd, 2023. 
Yeah. Um, yes. Sorry. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we uh, set the public hearing for the town warrant for May 23rd, 2023. I'll second that. All those in favor? Thank you. Sorry, I was confused by reading that. I was like, is wait, public hearing for the town meeting? I was like, are we, <laughs> we're having the town meeting before the, the, the election? Now I'm, now I'm all confused. Yeah. <laughs> All right, set the polling hours for June 13th, 2023 town meeting elections. The town clerk recommends 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's been working out for us? Yeah. Don't need to go back to 6 a.m.? No. <laughs> I'll make a motion to set the polling hours for the June 13th, 2023 town meeting election from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, we have a request from the town clerk to close customer service on June 13th, 2023. You want to keep running up and down the stairs? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, do anyway, so. I think the important thing is to get the, uh, the, the staff to help her out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I make a motion that we uh, close the customer service booth, uh, window June 13th, 2023 for the election. I'll second that. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, it, June 13th yeah. is going to be the election date, right? Yes. Right. Starting in June, these meetings will become the first yes. and third Tuesday of every month. So we will not be having a meeting that night. We'll right. be having a meeting the week before. Yes. Okay. So that'll be the, that will be the month June that changes. All right. Starting June 6th? Yes. Yes. June 6th will be uh, our first First Tuesday of the month. Well, actually, it's Tuesday. five weeks, so like it actually is every other week still. Yeah. So we don't actually like <laughs> we don't have the back-to-back -back meetings. We don't have any quick lane deeds or installments, abatements. Uh, we have a farmland penalty. R O six two dash seven fifty seven old route four. Hi, Alex. Hey, how are you doing? Better. Good. All right. So we have a request for a withdrawal of acreage from a current use program. Um, it's for tax map R062-7 uh, at 57 Old Route 4 um, for the tax year 23-24. Um, the assessment currently in the program is $19,200. Uh, the property owner, Stephen Brown, has requested the entirety of the above noted parcel to be re removed from the farmland current use program. Uh, since the property will no longer be in the farmland program, a penalty must be issued. Um, please see the attached farmland penalty calculation sheet calculated pursuant to Title 36 MRS subsection 1112-C3, along with the taxpayer's request letter. Um, therefore, it is recommended that you approve a farmland penalty in the amount of $22,573.33. Um, to the property owner for the removal of 53.9 acres. Uh, from the farmland classification. Are there any questions for Alex? I mean, yeah. Brains go mushy today. Any questions? Does, do we know why he's doing why he removed it? Do we, do we know why he's doing it? Um, he's taking one lot out currently, and he's probably has plans to divide off more since he's taking the whole parcel out. Um, he He's been developing that whole parcel mm -hmm. down oh, yes. there. He's taken mm -hmm. a lot of his land out of you know, tree growth and farmland now. So okay. yeah. All and, and it was his request. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm sure he knows this penalty is coming then. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just one, one thing to note too, in his request letter, he has the acreage as, I think it's 50 acres or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. But he had just had the survey done to divide that piece out. So we had been taxing at the 53.9. So that's what the penalty is drawn off of. Oh, okay. I will hear a motion on the penalty. I'll make a motion that we approve the farmland penalty in the amount of $22,573.33 for tax map RO62-7. 
Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, that is approved. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thank you very much for Thank you. I always feel bad. They stay the whole meeting. And they're all always at the very <laughs> bottom of the page. Um, we no longer have any public, so I don't imagine there's any second public comment, unless anybody in the board has anything to say. Um, there's no executive session. Other business, non agenda items. Uh, I have a couple of things I want to bring up. I, I want to talk about the, the trash bash cleanup. Is, um, is, uh, my family participated in that on Saturday, but when we came down to pick up our gear here, I was surprised at the number of people, for one thing, that came that were out there. And when you looked at the map of where everybody went, mm -hmm. is, there's quite a bit of burrow got picked up. Is, um, I have to say that the most common thing we picked up were Pabst Blue Ribbon beer cans. <laughs> is, by far, they were the most numerous. Is, um, well, so I'll, I'll tell you that we participated too, and the most common thing we saw in Knox Lane was Dunkin' Donuts styrofoam cups. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, just to point out too, it's going all week. Right, yes. it, right. It's going going all week. So, um, the other thing I want to bring up is um, there's um, interest in town in community gardens. Um, yeah, there's been a couple different meetings about it. I've talked to some people about it. Um, and just so the board knows, is one of the areas that we're looking at is the spot behind the police and fire station right. up in there. Um, I walked around there with Amarita Cottrell the other day and uh, there's a, a section up in there that looks like it'd be worked really well for it. So with, uh, she's working on some uh, information about layout and things like that. So um, for the people that are interested, is it looks like we will be working on community gardens this year. So. Sounds good. Sounds like an improvement. Um, yeah, I, I also was blown away seeing people with vests on all over the place and was just really glad to see it, people taking mm -hmm. it seriously. Um, so a lot of people with those little hook things. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So, and I already mentioned that we're meetings change starting June first. Um, we have a candidate form coming up, I believe. Um, yeah. BCM is trying to get one organized for the seventeenth of May. Seventeenth of May. Uh, two of us have committed so far. Gotcha. Um, so. Yeah. So there is um, a lot going on. Please sign up for the bi-monthly uh, the update because that's got a lot of good information on there. And, yeah, available to everybody. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. I make the motion that we should adjourn. No second that. All those in favor? See you in two weeks. Um.